call to order. Mrs. Rhonda Odom. I believe after the superintendent. Okay. Dr. Cerns, if you will give us your statement and then we will yes. have Mrs. Odom to come to the podium. Okay. Uh, my statement is as follows. Um, August 3rd, 2020, in accordance with section 200.065 and chapters 1010 and 1011 of the Florida statutes, I am submitting the tentative balanced budget for fiscal year 2020-2021, and I'm recommending the proposed millage to be levied. On July 23rd, 2020, you approve the tentative budget and millage for advertising. The purpose of today's public hearing is to approve the 2020 2021 proposed tentative budget and proposed millage rate and to set the date, time, and place of the final public hearing on the budget. Madam Chair, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Superintendent. Surrency. At this time, Mrs. Odom, our fin Chief Financial Officer, if you would please come. Okay. And I believe you all have a hard copy of the handouts, and yes, we're just going to yes, go briefly through them. Since uh, we don't have any public here, I don't expect to take too much of your time today. As Dr. Surrency stated, we're here today to present, discuss, and adopt the tentative millage rates and the tentative budgets for the 2020 21 school year. Um, the first thing that I'm required by law to discuss with you all is the um, to be in compliance with Florida Truth and Millage is the rollback rate. The rollback rate is the rate that it would take to uh, bring into the district the same amount of tax revenue that we received last year without taking into effect any new uh, construction. It is applied to the current year tax base and uh, that rollback rate for us is 5.949 mills. Our 2020-2021 millage rate is 5.8970 mills. So this is an increase of 0 0.4201 mills from the rollback rate. And on page two of the millage handout, you'll, you'll see that it's an increase of 0 0.028 actual mills from last year's millage rate. And this entire increase is attributable to the um, rate set by the legislature in our required local effort and in a prior period period millage funding adjustment. And one of the things that we have to look at to determine whether we're having a proposed tax increase or just a budget hearing is um, seeing how much funds will come in from the new millage rate. And it'll bring in roughly 107.3% of the funds that were generated from last year's 5.869 mills. You'll see on page three of the handout that if a property owner has a property value of $100,000, he will see a slight increase in the taxes owed to the school district of $2.10. And as I said, these millage rates were set by the uh, state and we have to levy them in order to receive our FEFP funds, which is roughly $60 million. And each school board that participates in the state allocation of fund through the uh, FEFP have to levy the amount of millage set by the for the required local effort in the prior pe uh, period funding. Uh, your next handouts, we're just going to go through a few little informational handouts. The next is a comparison of the Putnam County tax values, millage, and revenue. And um, you'll see that um, I want to show you the decline in millage rates and revenue generated from 2007-8, which is the year that we all remember mm -hmm. uh, to the present budget year of 2020, 2021, and that's hard to say. <laughs> mm -hmm. Our millage rate has declined by 1.597 mills in that period of time, and our decline in property tax revenue is over $2 million. Valuations are on the rise, but due to the reduction in our required local efforts set by the legislature and the reduction in our capital from 2.0 mills to 1.50 mills, we are collecting uh, less in tax dollars. The next handout is the general fund collection of property taxes, and that's just an analysis. You, as you all know, we're required to budget to receive a 96% uh, 96 collection rate in the general fund. and we. Ever since I've been here, we've always collected over well over our budgeted rate, except for uh, one year in 2015-2016. We had a rough year and only collected um, 
98.89%, so we were down over $200,000. You'll see mm. in the current year, we're a little low for 2019-20, but um, when I printed this out, we had not received the delinquent tax distribution and distribution number 12, which is for the sales tax mm -hmm. certificate sales. I received an email this morning um, that we are going to be receiving that money on uh, Wednesday. Great. So we'll be back on track. Mm -hmm. Instead yeah. of being $51,000 down, we'll be up over 72000 So what that will amount to is we've collected over 100% of the 96% we're required to budget. So that's, awesome. that's a good that's thing. That's good. good. Yes, ma'am. Your next handout is just an analysis of capital dollars because while general fund goes down, capital does also. And I did that from 2007-8 through the current year. And... Um, in the current year, our tax base did go up, so we're projected at more capital millage dollars than last year, but we're still over $800,000 less than we received in capital millage dollars in 2007-8. We no longer received the PICO new construction fund, so that's another half million dollars less than we received in 2007-8. Mm. And our PICO special maintenance funds have dwindled down, and they're down $1.2 million from 2007-8. So overall, we've seen a decline in capital funds of $2.6 million dollars for this year compared to what we received back in 2007-8. Uh, the next item, uh, since we've been discussing millage and tax revenue, is the handout that was you, sent, you saw at the advertising meeting, and that was in the newspaper, and that's the notice of tax for school capital outlay. It was in Wednesday's paper, and we are required by law to advertise how we plan to spend the 1.5 mills for capital outlay purposes. Just because it's on there doesn't mean we have to do everything on the list, but if it's not listed, we can't uh, do, do spend on anything that's not on the list. So it's, it's basically a, a plan. And the trim guidelines do specify the categories and language that can appear on this advertisement. Your next handout, I want you to see um, broken down how we plan to spend that capital mil projects millage budget. And that 1.5 mills will bring in just over $7 million in funds. And we do fund our maintenance department from it. And we also give some money to schools and departments for capital outlay needs. We utilize uh, flexibility that's in the statute to pay a, prop a portion of our property insurance. And I think I told you at the advertising meeting, we, um, we pay over $1.8 million, but the statute's very strict on what you can't, what portions of it you can. And so it's only about 500 and something thousand that we can uh, pay for out of capital. And the rest is paid for out of the general fund. Uh, we pay our current year portion on the master purchase agreement for the buses that we did a couple of years back yep. and the energy retrofit fit loan. Um, transportation did ask for two um, new buses this year, and they asked for a vehicle for transportation. Maintenance asked for a vehicle, and media asked for a vehicle. So we put all those things in that ad, and I put them in the budget. And we still have an additional 800 million, uh, 800,000, I wish it was 800 wow. million, <laughs> new money that can be used for remodeling renovation needs for the year over what maintenance uh, can provide through the dollars and staff uh, provided to them. Take that away us in a hurry. And the next ad is the budget summary ad that uh, was also in the newspaper. And that's a one-page compression of our budget summarized by fund type, revenue source, and expenditure function. Uh, it was in Wednesday's paper. And it's also provided in the white notebook line by line, cost center by cost center. And it's in um, your mail room. And at your convenience, if you want to get it, it's about this thick and look it over. Mm -hmm. But at any time, you, you can request uh, <laughs> that I send you a printout of any school, any department, or the entire budget. And I can send it to you via email, or I can put it in your box uh, for you to have a copy. But uh, as always, from this particular handout, as I did at the meeting to advertise, I always call your attention to a couple of things. You'll see that um, in the first column of the general fund, because that's that's the fund that I concentrate the most on because it's our operational fund. Um, you'll see our beginning fund balance on July 1st, 2020 was 10751345 and that our estimated June 30th, 2021 fund balance is 4706089.20. Your next handout will show you how that is broken out. Uh, though it sounds really good to have a $10 million fund balance at June 30th, um, it's got reserve for project balances within it, and those are state 
and local projects that have strings attached, and that was over $3.6 million of that $10 million. We also have encumbrances, that's purchase orders that were put on but have not been finalized yet, but the money's already spoken for, that was $614,000. We have a reserve for inventory, so that's not a cash item, but it's items that we have in stock and um, that's 368,000. We've got our 3% mandate, mandated unreserved fund balance, uh, $2.5 million. And at the end of the year, the funds that roll back to the general fund pot after all revenue came in and all expenditures had been done, another $3.5 million. So that amounts to the 10.7 million I was talking about. And you'll see also that our proposed ending fund balance is a lot less than our beginning fund balance, as it is every year. Uh, carryover project balances and carryover encumbrances are taken out of the projected ending fund balance as it's assumed that we'll uh, spend out all the carryover projects. And even if some of them didn't enroll to the next year, there's still money that we don't have access to because they have strings attached. And we expect to also pay for the goods and services that are currently sitting in a purchase order encumbrance. So those two figures alone reduced our expected ending fund balance by $4.3 million, and the projected 630-2020 fund balance is $4.7 million, and I put um, aside money for the McKay scholarship so that when we do get that uh, reduction in our FEFP funds, we won't be scrambling to find the money. It usually comes in the last FEFP calculation. Uh, one that hit us this year was a new one, and that was the Family Empowerment Scholarship. And it was larger than the McKay scholarship, so I set aside 450000 for that. I Mrs. Set a, Mrs. Odom. Yes, ma'am. And, and the McKay scholarship, these are the monies that go to the charter schools that follow the students? Well, not to charter schools, no, ma'am. I mean, we, we have to send money to the charter schools, too, and I have that in the budget. But these are, like, public school scholarships, and I believe the Family Empowerment Scholarship is, and that's a new one that was written into statute. So the money, yes, it's our Putnam County students, but they've chose, chosen to go to a private school or something okay. along that okay. line. Thank you. You're welcome. Buddy, and I've got... Um, named after Buddy McKay, and they had a, he had a handicapped child. and That's, oh, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And usually I can, I, I can get a list, you know, closer to the time that this comes. Uh, that will give me a heads up on how many, but we've been running... Uh, 325 to 300, 375 every year on McKay scholarships. And like I said, um, family empowerment was brand new and I didn't find out about it until May. Uh -huh. And I didn't have that money budgeted for this past year, so, but you know, we rocked through it and everything. And so I set some aside this year for assuming it is gonna be, I budgeted about $25,000 more than they took from us in last fiscal year because um, they've increased it for this year you know they're slowly building it up and they sort of told us you know how much more uh they're offering out this year so i wanted to put a little bit extra buffer in there uh, i've also Rhonda. got a uh, contingent re contingency reserve for fte shortfall because Mrs. Beyond, oh i'm sorry go ahead um i'm sorry no, but i good. wanted to ask this before i forget when we were talking about the mckay scholarship and um that money is used every year yes ma'am there's so, always some there's always some students that receive the McKay scholarship and I don't ever find out until close to the time that they withhold the money from it because they tell so us. it it would cost three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars we give that money for kids in Putnam County that go to private schools in Putnam yes, County but we don't no, I mean we, we got one okay. private school I'm not sure who all they are. We can, it Evelyn Langston used to provide the list to me and I'll get Andy Burnett to uh, give it to me at a later date because he, I know they're not all ESE students, but the majority of them are. Okay. Um, but the money they've told us, we're gonna get it based on the number of students in Putnam County. But just like we have to turn around and pay the charter schools their share because the kids do not come to us and we directly pay them. The state pulls the money out of our pot and the state pays for the McKay and the family empowerment. Okay. And um, until I knew that I could get a, a list of names and everything, um, it, it would just occur. I, I don't, you know, I'm not interested in names. I was just mm -hmm. wondering what, what schools it went to. Yeah, well, for me, I was wanting the people so I could try to come up with an accurate There's count. a variety yeah, of different places yeah, that could It hasn't been to. under 325,000 in several years, so. Yeah. That one hasn't been increasing. The one, like I said, the new one is the one that uh, 
um, yeah, took me by surprise. Those schools were so bad. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that the next two or three years, they're going to steadily increase the amount of scholarships they're giving out for family empowerment. So that's something we'll have to keep an eye on. Um, not knowing, I always set aside a reserve in case we're declining again, which uh, in enrollment, which we've been doing for many yeah. years. Um, but there's a new level of uncertainty, not knowing how many will make the decision to homeschool and we'll get no funds for that and right. everything. So uh, I've set aside $400,000 for if we have a shortfall of FTE and $400,000 if we have a proration of funds because I still do believe that after the election they'll come back and they'll reduce us. You know, that's been rumor all along and um, we know the collections are way off of what they projected for yeah. their revenue because of all this. So, um, you know, knock on wood, that won't happen, but we'll have the money uh, available, some set aside in case that does happen so that we won't, you know, have to come back and face some tough decisions and everything. I've set aside the 3% mandated unreserved fund balance, $2.5 million, and the uh, unreserved right now is a very small amount, um, $123,000. That's the lowest it's been in several years, but we, you know, we did, uh, we've been building up the fund balance. We gave out raises last year, had to budget for them this year. The cost of um, Florida retirement went up to 10% that we have to contribute this year, as well as the employees paying 3% on their own. And that was an increase in the general fund of over $700,000 of additional expenses. And we didn't even get enough increased flexible funds to pay for the retirement. So, but we'll work on building the fund balance back up again. Um, the next handout is strictly again for informational purposes. I wanted to give you my Excel version of the general fund. That's where I start the process. Um, it shows you the estimated revenues for the year, transfers in from the capital projects fund for funding our maintenance department and for property insurance flexibility, our carryover reserves. Um, it shows um, all the budgeted expenditures by categories and I thought you might like to see you know how much is salary and benefits how much is state categoricals how much are going to the charter schools yes. operational costs school discretionary dollars uh, district initiative fund balance categories um, and I'll, over to the far right once you get to the expenditure before we size. go there mm -hmm. before we go there mrs. Odom uh, 344 lottery dollars mm -hmm. and it's nothing yes ma'am they, uh, we had it in the initial budget, but it was a very small amount, about thirty thousand dollars. And when the governor, that's gover a shame. All those when the gover people governor buying. signed the uh, budget, finally signed it after all those weeks and a couple of months, um, I first thought that he didn't change um, the FEFP at all, but he did take out the lottery dollars, which is the discretionary lottery dollars and then the school recognition. There will not be any school recognition dollars this year because no schools received a grade last right. year. Right. So that was about, overall between the two categories, about $500,000 wow. he took out. Only um, the ten to 20000 that was discretionary lottery dollars affected the overall uh, general fund flexible budget because um, the school recognition goes to the schools and they didn't get a chance to get a grade, so you know they don't get. That. I can but understand. But they've really been pushing those commercials about lottery going, lottery <laughs> money going to education. Uh -huh. Well, and I can understand the grade, the uh, recognition part. Yes. But to take the lottery dollars, I, I guess it was I, such as it has gotten down to such a small amount. And goes, I know there's lottery dollars that go, you know, to students getting bright. Uh, future scholarships and things like that. So some lot lottery dollars does still go to education, it, but it goes not to, ours. to the students to you know, get one the hand scholarships the other anyway. and everything. It's, it's just a shell Give game. It it, it's all it no, when I first started doing this, we received enough to pay for the deans, the guidance counselors at every school. It was, it we was had wonderful. enough lottery dollars wow. for that. And now last and year, now the most we got was even $30, more. For the whole but it's, it's, it's turned into a shell game. I it mean, it truly has. Yeah. Um, the next it thing is just quit playing it. <laughs> the next thing I want you to see <laughs> an analysis of our base student allocation, and that's our flexible state funds. It went up exactly forty dollars over last year, and uh, we were we're receiving one hundred and fifty six dollars and two cents more per student in BSA funds than we received this time thirteen years ago, two thousand seven eight. Thank goodness. So that's three point seven percent more, but that is so far below the inflation factor from um, thirteen years ago. Um, so, you know, 
we all still complain about the base student allocation we wish it was so much more because that is the flexible source of funds and if we ever do get to give raises and stuff that's usually where it comes from but it just has never recouped from 2007 8 um, I can remember, you know, we were getting good increases every year. We were able to do nice raises every year, and it's just a thing of the past now. Uh, the next one pager is an analysis of our FTE. That's our number of students. And you'll see that our FTE is um, still, we're looking at a decline over last year, an expected decline over last year of 43 FTE. Since 2002, 2003, I've been keeping up with this a lot longer. We have declined by over 1,800 students, and that's an average of 100 students a year in the last 18 years. And I, as I mentioned, I've set aside a reserve of 400,000 for that in case the students do not come. And I truly hope that's enough of a set aside this year with everything going on. Hmm. Uh, I wanted you to see a history of fund balance in Putnam County. Um, and that's the general fund fund balance. That's the one that uh, is looked at every year by the auditors. And uh, the top part of the handout is Putnam County School District. And in the middle is the average financial condition ratios. And when I say history of fund balance, there's a total fund balance, but that includes inventory and state projects. Just like you remember how much that big, big amount we had left over at the end of the year for state projects, over $3 million. And then the auditors say there's a financial condition ratio, and that's the money that's truly available. That's your assigned and unassigned fund balance. So we ended 1920 with a 7.24% um, financial condition ratio, and uh, the total amount of that was $6 million. Um, and they the state's always a year or two behind so the last year they've done a financial condition ratio was 2017-18 and it was just published uh, in march of 2020 the state average is 9.51 percent i am happy to say that this is the first year there's been zero school districts with a ratio below the three percent that you're required to have last year there were two you know three years in a row there were five school districts that didn't have that 3% fund balance that you're required to have. So this just sort of shows how we've been doing. Um, you know, at one point in time, we were, especially in 2007 and eight, after they cut us, we were spending more than we were taking in. Mm -hmm. We worked on that. Um, we've got that under control. You will see we had a slight decrease this year. And again, that was because we had been building up fund balance. We gave out the raises, which everybody so deeply deserved and everything mm -hmm. so we'll again start and building back on the fund balance again and, and the three percent that we mandatorily set aside and you compile that statewide it's a massive amount of money the state hands you and then they they say you can't spend it in case they okay. need it they take it back yeah so if you go below three percent then you have to do a plan you have to the board has to approve the plan to get us back to three percent it has to go to the state if you go below 2%, that's when the state comes in and takes over and says, we can do it better than you can. Mm -hmm. We're going to tell you what you have to cut from right. your budget. And, mm -hmm. and that's happened in counties before, so uh, we, we won't get to that point. <laughs> uh, the final little handout that we have uh, is just called How Much Is Our Budget? And it's strictly, again, for informational purposes. It takes our total proposed budget, because you remember from the handout with NEFEC, it's over $180, $180 million. Uh, it subtracts out items that are in more than one place, and what I mean by that, uh, let's say that the, the transfer to fund the maintenance department is a, it's an expenditure in the capital projects fund as a transfer out, and they code it as an expenditure, and then the general fund is a revenue coming in as a transfer in. So that $3.6 million is in two, two different fund sources, so I like to pull that out. Um, let's say health insurance is another one. Uh, any fund that a person is paid from, they've got their $4,500 board contribution uh, health as an expenditure in that fund. And then at the end of each month after our payroll, we transfer that dollar, those dollars into the group insurance fund as a revenue in. And then we pay out of the group insurance fund, we pay you know, health insurance. So those expenditures are in two different funds. And so I like to pull that out. Uh, after I do all of that, I take out the NEFEC grant, uh, NEFEC grants as that funding belongs to NEFEC and we are just their fiscal agent. And then to get down to so you can determine what our true district uh, recurring revenue is, uh, is, I take out the carryover fund balance and just carry that, you know, bring that uh, $188 million budget down to recurring revenues that belong to the district of $107 million. 
So um, that's really all the handouts I have. So before we do go to the roll call vote, are there any questions uh, for me from the board members? How you do it? So like Who's the superintendent or the, you the me. public that are here? That's why she's been the president of the Florida School Finance Director. Well, she needs it. to be president of the world. Oh, no, 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 no. I just like numbers. That's I don't all. know about the world because I've had to deal with Ron. She would get on to you. <laughs> would not like that at all. So if, if there are no questions, I'll turn it over to Charlie. Just so that commend you for the great job for having the it. foresight to to know how to make all of this happen i appreciate that yeah. one of the to i guess one of the things that Rob Peter really is important Ooh. to me is setting aside setting aside those reserves because when i was in the outer office and it would come to this time my predecessor would always come out to me and miss bates and say we've just been cut half a million dollars or a million dollars you got to look at budgets we got to see where we can cut so um, I learned from that and I try to do set asides in our fund balance so that when the cuts do come we can take it from that short, instead of going to schools and departments right. or yes. even having to let people go or whatever so it's it's worked out well there's been a year or two that I didn't get quite quite close enough and we had to reduce fund balance but it certainly helps by having those reserves and I've got a team that works with me and allows me to set aside you know those reserves without trying to pull them out for additional expenditures mm -hmm. and everything so it takes a team to do this uh, i do appreciate so it though thank you all right mr douglas i'll turn it over to you okay thank you Ms. Thank, Odom. thank you rhonda no problem and madam chair um if at this time uh, you could ask for a, a motion and a second um, for item c1 okay madam chair i'd make a motion for item C C one that we approve. I'll second that. All right, it's the motion by Mr. Buckles that we accept item C one and second by Mrs. Jane Crawford. Uh, are we ready to vote? Charlie, do we need to read what the statement is? Uh, yes, ma'am. It would be uh, good. Do you want it uh, read out? Where is it? Okay, C1 is tentative required local effort millage rate of 3.627 mils. David okay. made the motion and I second. Yes. All right, it's been properly moved uh, by Mr. Buckles, motion by Mr. Buckles, and second by Mrs. Crawford that we accept uh, item C1. And we have no discussion. All in favor? Okay. Wait. Oh, roll call. We have to do a roll call. Okay. So, uh, roll call. District 1? District Aye. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. And District 5? Yes. Madam Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the tentative prior period funding adjustment millage rate of 0 0.022 mils. I second that. All right, it's been motioned by Mrs. Crawford that we accept the tentative prior period funding adjustment millage rate of 0 0.022 mils and second by Mr. David Buckles. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. District five. Yes. Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approved uh, number three, tentative discretionary millage rate of 0 0.748 mills. A second. A motion by Mr. Buckles that we accept uh, item number three, approved tentative discretionary millage rate of 0 0.748 mills, and second by Mrs. Holly Pickens. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. And district five. Yes. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve item 6-4, tentative capital outlay millage rate of 1.500 mills. I'll second that. It's been motioned by Mr. Bud McInnes that we approve tentative capital outlay millage rate of 1.500 mills and second by Mrs. Jane Crawford. District 1. Yes. District 2. Yes. 
District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. And District 5? Yes. Madam Chair, I motion that we accept C5 tentative total millage rate of 5.897 mills, which is 7.318% above the rollback rate. I second that. All right, it's been motioned by Mrs. Holly Pickens that we approve the tentative total millage rate of 5.897 mills, which is 7.318% above the rolled back rate. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. Madam Chair, I would like to make a motion that we approve uh, C6 tentative general fund budget of $100,408,162.79. I second that. It's been motioned by Mr. David Buckles that we approve item C6 to approve the tentative general fund budget of $100,408,162.79. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. And District 5? Yes. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve item C7, tentative debt service funds budget of $114,192.35. I'll second that. It's been motioned by Mr. Bud McInnes that we approve item C7, debt service funds budget of $114,192.35. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we adopt C8, Tentative Capital Projects Funds Budget of $11,187,834.20. I second. Go ahead, Mr. I'll second it's, that. It's been motioned by Mr. Bud McInnes that we approve item C8, the Tentative Capital Projects Fund Budget of $11,186,834.20. And I believe that was 187000 That's correct. Okay, uh, I need to repeat that. The capital project fund budget of $11,187,834.20. And that was seconded by uh, Ms. Ms. Crawford. Is that yes, right? sir. No. 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 Uh, pick, uh, it was Pickens. Pickens. Okay, Ms. Pickens. Okay. Uh, District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt C9 tentative special revenue funds budget of $17,238,429.04. I'll second that. All right, it's been motioned by Mr. David Buckles that we accept uh, approve item C9, uh, tentative special revenue funds budget of $17,000,000. $238,429.04. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. And District 5? Yes. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve item C10, tentative internal service funds budget of $34,085,239. I'll second that. The motion by Mr. Bud McInnes that we accept item C10, um, the tentative internal service funds budget of $34,085,239. I'll second that. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve item C11, tentative permanent funds budget of $131,524.84. Second. All right, it's been motioned by Mrs. Holly Pickens that we approve item C11, tentative permanent budget 
funds budget of $131,524.84. District 1. Yes. District 2. Yes. District 3. Yes. District 4. Yes. District 5. Yes. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve item C12, tentative enterprise funds budget of $25,096,507.87. I'll second that. It's been motioned by Mr. Bud McInnes that we accept item C12, tentative, tentative <laughs> enterprise funds budget of $25,096,507.87. District 1. Yes. District 2. Yes. District 3. Yes. District 4. Yes. And District 5. Yes. Madam, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve item C13, total district tentative budget in its entirety of $188,000. I'll second that. It's been motioned by Mr. David Buckles that we approve item C13, total district tentative budget in its entirety of $188,261,890.09. District 1. Yes. District 2. Yes. District 3. Yes. District 4. Yes. District 5. Yes. Madam Chair, we need a motion to advise the property appraiser on when the final budget hearing will be. Okay. It should be at the bottom uh, of the sheet. I make a motion that we uh, advise the property appraiser's office as soon as, as uh, Ms. Odom and, the, and district staff can. I'll second that. All right, it's been motioned by Mr. David Buckles that we advise the property appraisal's office as soon as possible via Mrs. Odom and second by Mrs. Holly Pickens. All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Opposers, you're hearing none, motion carries 5-0. And, and just for that purpose too, do you want to do a roll call vote? Go ahead, Yes, sir. sir. Okay, District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. District five? Yes. Do we, need, did it need to say that on September 15th? We, okay. Fine, I'll let them know that. I would, I would, I'll be certified I would tomorrow. I the, the minutes that we do read that into the record. If you don't mm -hmm. mind uh, stating that in the, in the form of a motion. Uh, okay, just read that statement. All right. Uh, we so will advise. Done. All right. We, we will advise the property appraisals that Tuesday, September 15, 2020 at 5.05 p.m. in the school board meeting room, 200 Reed Street, Palatka, Florida, a public hearing will be held to consider the final millage rate and the final budget. Some great that numbers, suffices. Rhonda. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yes, thank you. All right. Sorry, it's so tedious. Uh, Mr. Michelle, Superintendent. We'll have to do this one more time. Okay. Mr. Superintendent. Yes, ma'am. Uh, do you have anything to say before the meeting is adjourned? No, ma'am. Thank you for um, your attention to that. Thank you again to Ms. Odom. And thank you for our board attorney. I appreciate all the time you've been into that. All right. We adjourn. <laughs>